Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire, and this week I'm going to show you how to put paint under and over a mask while it's still on the gel plate, and then pull it off and then print. So we get the most successful gel prints by layering, 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 but there's lots of different ways that you can achieve layers, and sometimes they're more creative than maybe you even ever thought of. So painting on top of the mask while it's still on the plate is a little bit messy, but it yields some beautiful results. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. So in today's tidbit, I'm going to do some interesting layering with my spiral repeat mask design, which is part of my brand new collection of Gustav Klimt inspired stencils and masks for joggles.com. So that is the spiral repeat mask. Um, it is inspired by the art of Gustav Klimt as it incorporates the double ended spiral shape and these half circle shapes, which I like to call the coffee bean motif. So this is a nice mask as it's got a free formed edge and the mylar, the positive of the plastic, creates the pattern, and that's why it's a mask. In a stencil, the holes create the pattern, but in a mask, the plastic mylar creates the pattern. So we've got that. Um, also from joggles.com, I've got a packet of encyclopedia pages. Now, these are wonderful because they have a layer of texture already on them in the type and sometimes little illustrations that appear on the pages. And also they're a durable yet thin paper. So it smushes down in between all the detailed spaces of the mask really nicely getting a really great impression. So these are encyclopedia pages in a uh, packet from joggles.com and my nine by 12 spiral repeat mask. Now the joggles links are down below your video for purchasing those products. The other product that's here from joggles today is my Dina Wakely 9 by 11 gel plate. And then I've got golden fluid acrylics. I'm going to be using highly translucent colors so that I can see that text and type from the encyclopedias showing through in my print. So how do I know that transparent yellow oxide and manganese blue are highly translucent? Well, first of all, they've got swipes of actual paint. These are actual paint swipes on the front label of the container going over the black tick marks that are part of the label of the container. Now that is there to show you how transparent or translucent the color is. So since I can see those black tick marks very strongly through both of these color swipes, I know that these are highly translucent colors. And because of that, they're going to allow my encyclopedia type to show through the paint. The color that I'm going to use in uh, with much moderation is iridescent copper because you can see when I turn that to the light, you can't see the black tick marks at all. So iridescent colors are going to be opaque and I'm going to use this very minimally on the top so that it doesn't block out too much of my encyclopedia page text. So the first layer is going to be that lightest color, the yellow oxide, and I'm going to spread a relatively thin layer of that out onto my 9 by 11 Dina Wakely gel press plate. Once I get that spread out, I'm going to put the spiral repeat mask into the paint, get it to go down flat, and then I'm going to take a cleanup sheet of rice paper and just remove the paint from the negative spaces in this mask so that I'm left with the positive pattern of the paint that's trapped under the mylar. So I'm removing all the space from the opening, all the paint from the openings or the spaces in the mask. So here I've lifted the paint and what's left here is just the yellow oxide that's trapped under the mask. So I've cleaned it out from in between the spaces and now I'm going to add manganese blue into the openings by leaving the mask on the plate and putting the paint on top. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that paint on top. I'm gonna to clean my brayer off on a side sheet to make sure there's no more yellow in it. I don't want this blue to turn to green. So I'm gonna make sure this brayer is rolled off and clean. And then I'm gonna spread the manganese blue right on top of that mask. I have not removed the mask from the gel plate. I am adding this paint on top. Now I'm gonna clean my brayer by rolling it off on a sheet 
off to the side again. And here I'm gonna use that opaque color. But as I said, very sparingly because I still wanna be able to see my text and type. So I'm just gonna shake this bottle. Shake it, don't squeeze it. And it'll give you a few droplets. Just shake it or tap it, don't squeeze it. And then I'm gonna take the big six inch sprayer and lightly move around spreading this in small amounts into the manganese blue. So now I'm going to remove the mask and then I'm going to put my encyclopedia pages right into that multi-layered paint on the plate. Now I'm going to put two of them like this. One's going to print pretty much full and the other one will print about two-thirds. So I'm going to get a good, good impression. And when I pull, I get a very interesting print that allows that yellow oxide that was trapped to be soft edged with the manganese blue. This is a sort of a different feeling than you would get if you pressed through the mask. So here is a beautiful soft edged print with the transparent yellow oxide, the manganese blue, and just a little bit of metallic copper. And on this edge, we got a little bit of a stronger pattern with those three colors. And you can see that the encyclopedia text still shows through those beautiful translucent golden fluid acrylic paint colors. So that's just another way that you can make layered complex prints with my new mask for joggles.com part of the Gustav Klimt inspired collection. Happy Friday and thank you for being here. And just as a reminder, if you'd like to have more tutorials that go further in depth, often they're multi-part series, come check me out on Patreon. My Patreon page, that link is in the upper right hand corner, is a subscription-based tutorial video learning format it's $25 and it is month to month. So you can hop in there for $25, look around at the content, see what you think and choose to continue or stay your month and choose to leave. No hard feelings and no longer of a commitment than 30 days. So in-depth multi-part tutorials publishing every single week at patreon.com. That link's in your upper right hand corner and this month, September 2021, the entire month, I am going to be doing video diaries from Tuscany. I'll be teaching and working in Tuscany for the month of September. And if you hop into my Patreon in September of 2021, you'll have exclusive video diary content that's going to be publishing from Tuscany as often as I can do it. So definitely more than once a week these video diaries. So lots of fun stuff happening on Patreon, lots of exclusive content. So month to month, check it out, patreon.com slash Elizabeth St. Hilaire. It'll be the best $25 you've ever spent.